Welcome to Sunday School for Sunday, September 29th, 2024 for our junior high students. I do not own the rights to this music. The title of today's story, Rejoice Anyway. A couple weeks after Jewel was admitted onto the team, her aunt Rose died. Jewel had seen her one morning before going to school. The week before her passing, Aunt Rose awoke and whispered to Jewel about her competition. Jewel, when? asked her aunt. Her voice faint and airy. I'm on the team, Auntie, Jewel said, feeling a mixture of happiness and sadness at the same time. Happy? That was the last thing Aunt Rose said to Jewel. Happy? Like a command or a wish or a prayer. The afternoon of her death, the long black hearse pulled up to collect the lovely aunt's body. Jewel's father had taken care of most of the arrangements for Aunt Rose. That was by her request, and visitors stopped by that night. After the house was quiet, Jewel asked her father how he was doing. I'm thinking about this morning, he said, when Aunt Rose squeezed your hand. Me too, said Jewel. It must have been her way of saying goodbye. He whispered. A tear fell down the side of his face. I already miss her. She loved you, Daddy. Not as much as she loved you, though, baby girl. That made them both smile. Then her father turned on some jazz music. We need to clean up a little bit, and we need to eat dinner before we fall faint. She loved jazz, said Jewel. That's our fault, isn't it? Her father asked. Guilty. Jewel said, raising two hands, no doubt thinking about all the concerts they shared together. There's a lot to be happy about today. Her father moved to clean up. Jewel followed. The memory verse for today's lesson. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall the fruit, neither shall fruit be in the vines. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And that's from Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Our lesson scripture is Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, and then Habakkuk chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower, and will watch to see what he will say unto me, and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also, because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fall, fail, and the field shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places, to the chief singer on my stringed instruments. Rejoice anyway. The scriptures are full of examples of people who lost many things. People lose their family, their health, or their land. Habakkuk saw his people finally return to their land, but still suffering loss. Even so, the prophet's message is that we don't have to fear. We may lose, we will lose, but we need not be afraid because of God's steady presence. God, according to the word, is on our side. How to pray like a prophet. Number one, open yourself in honest language to God. Number two, realize that we need not fear God when we're honest with Him. Number three, pray for hope. Number four, let God do His job. Trusting during laws. These are true or false. Number one, Habakkuk was on the lookout for God's answer. Is that true or false? Number two, God told the prophet to write down his message. 
Is that true or false? Number three, the righteous will live by hope. Is that true or false? Number four, we should always rejoice in the Lord. Is that true or false? Number five, the sovereign Lord is our strength. Is that true or false? Choosing hymns. Look through a hymn book in class and find a hymn that addresses a situation you or someone you love is going through now. If you cannot think of a situation, try to find a hymn that you would recommend to Habakkuk. After finding it, read some of the hymn to your class aloud, or if you know the song, sing it. Struggling to Trust Some people experience so many difficulties in life that they lose all hope for the future. The future looks dark and hopeless. Where can they turn for direction when things get really bad? Habakkuk affirms that no matter what calamities might come his way, he will trust God, rejoice in his presence in his life, and praise him for strength to carry on. His affirmations become guides to us during dark times. We don't ignore our hopelessness, but we don't stay with it either. We try to keep hope that we that what we feel is only partial. We try to hope that we have reasons to keep going and keep trusting in God. Singing the hymn. Use the hymn you chose earlier in the lesson to be a companion to you through this week. Hymns contain great summaries of our faith. Try to memorize your hymn's lyrics. If possible, try to find a melody online or by talking with a musician from church so that you can become familiar with the way the hymn sounds. The end. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.